Hi, and welcome to this video. The footage you're about to see was actually filmed two years ago while we were camping in 2020. It's now 2022. Unfortunately, when I was doing kind of one of my last little clips for that video, for this video, um, my battery died on my camera. And so I just never finished filming. Um, I was so close to the end though. And you'll see I get cut off in the middle of trying to tell you something. Um, so I just never got around to finishing it. Last year was just, there was just too much. Um, I didn't even bother trying to film anything last year when we went camping. Uh, but I rewatched all that footage and was like, there's just so much here that I really would like to share with you on camping with babies and small children. And I just never got around to finishing it. But I want to because I want to get that information out to you in case it might be helpful. So that's what you're about to see. But I wanted to have this introduction before we even get into um, the introduction for the actual video. Because uh, I talk about like different things that I put into place on our campsite to help with having a baby around. And I didn't necessarily have those items with me at the time because my daughter was so young. She was seven months old. Um, and they aren't things that I normally bring with us until they're a little older. My kids are a little older, um, but I have them with us now because she's now two and a half years old. So I may insert some clips um, showing what those items are currently that she's using. So as a two and a half year old, and I just wanted to give a little explanation because she's going to be seven months old in this video and also two and a half years old in this video. So I just want to give you a little context. Um, and I think that's pretty much what I wanted to say. So I'll just leave it here and let you watch the video from where I actually had it started when I originally filmed it. Hi, my name is Sarah. If you are new and if you aren't, welcome back. In this video, I wanted to chat with you a bit about how I camp with a baby. Um, if you're not familiar with any of my other camping videos, let me give you a little bit of brief history, um, just so you know where I'm coming from. My husband and myself have both grown up camping, um, so we've done it since we were kids. And then together, this is our 15th summer um, camping. And of those 15 summers, this is our 11th that we've had kids with us. So our kids range in age from seven months old all the way up to 10 and a half years old. We have taken our kids camping with us the first summer that they have been alive. So here's one of them. Um, so we've got, had an a range of ages starting from as young as about two weeks old up to I'd say around I think our oldest oh he's showing a penny that he just found or a nickel all right let mama talk okay um so about two weeks old up to I think our oldest there for summer was around nine months old so we've done a range in there um, so we've kind of done it all as far as that goes. And then I think it started back up around 12 months old. So there's a little bit of gap there. We didn't really do those three months there, but otherwise we've had kids all different ages and then growing up. But in today's video, I specifically wanted to talk about how we camp with a little baby, um, and try to give you any tips I have on how to make it go a little smoother now that we're on our fifth time going through this. Um, and hopefully it might give you some ideas, help you figure it out on your own and, and anything that it might help you with. Um, but I do want to say how we do things, I would really appreciate it if you aren't really critical about it because I'm not saying this is the way it has to be. Um, I'm just saying this is the way that it has worked for us and we continue to do it because it works for us and our family. And again, my hope is just that it gives you some ideas or insight on maybe how you can make it work for your family with a young baby. Alrighty, so here's my little seven month old. We're trying to get kids in the car right now. We're about to head out. So this video is going to take place <laughs> over a span of time while we're here. But this is one of my biggest tips right here. This jogging stroller, it's a bob we have taken it up with us every single year even when we haven't had a baby um it is a lifesaver it's where we put our baby when we need them to be contained and we're trying to do things around the campsite 
Um, so it works wonderful for that, especially as she is not yet sitting up on her own. She couldn't sit up like in a booster seat or anything like that at the table. Are you gonna talk about it? So it's just a great place for her to sit when we need her to. We have toys in there. I try to, if she threw them out more, I would hook them in more, but I have like these little links and then I can strap them onto here and put the other end onto a toy so that she can't really throw it out of the stroller. So that helps a lot. It helps for her taking a nap. I can have someone push her around. Hopefully she'll fall asleep and take a little nap in there if we need her to. And this is not a baby thing, but for older kids that are more toddler age that you are concerned about around a campfire, um, for especially like our son when he was younger, and even now, I mean, he's just now, he's almost five, and he's just now, um, we're more okay with him being loose around a campfire, but we still have to be very cautious of him. Um, it was a great way to contain a toddler, um, have them at the campfire with us, but also contain them so that we knew they were safe, um, especially as we're you know trying to help other kids with s'mores and things like that. So this is like a, a huge lifesaver for us. It helps us too, we're really close to a lake. Oh, are you smiling so big? You are, look at that. Um, we would, We'll pile this up with um, our stuff, like our, our beach blankets and things that we want to take down to the lake with us. And it's it, it's used like as a you know a transportation device in that way, not just for the baby, but also for our things from going to campsite to campsite. If we have family or friends up, we'll use it to travel that way as well. And you know we have our cup holders up there so we can bring things with us easily um, and have the baby with you know contained as well. Um, so this is one of my biggest lifesavers for sure is having this stroller. We always bring it up. It compacts down pretty well. Uh, we do take the wheels off, put them in a separate bag. That helps it to be a little bit more compact in whatever vehicle we're in. She's ready for a nap, so she's going to be a little fussy. But we're like I said, we're trying to get in the car right now, and she's hopefully going to take that nap in the car ride. So this is what I prefer. Um, if she was a little older and actually eating solids, I, ha I purposely am putting her off on solids until we get back from this trip because I didn't want to deal with food up here. So that's another tip. If you can avoid having to feed them food, especially when they're younger like this and just, you know, getting a taste for it, it helps a lot <laughs> not having to take that time to feed them table food as well. Um, I will try to put in any pictures of things that I talk about that I don't have with us right now but that I've used in the past. So one of those is for at the table here. These are pretty thick tables where we camp. So there are, I don't know if you can see how thick that is. There are like chairs that you can you know clamp on there. But at least when our oldest was younger, any ones that we found were not like wide enough to be able to clamp onto these really thick tables. Um, so in the past, and again, I'm gonna try to put a picture in here for you. We have used a very old folding chair that my parents gave to us. It's like kind of really beat up. That with a little booster seat and a um, tray. And then we just try to find a more level area on the ground and they sit next to us at the table and that's how I would feed, you know, a baby that's sitting up better, can sit in that booster and needs to be fed food. So that has worked as well as another place to contain a child. Although you do have to be very careful on with the uneven ground that's going to be all over a campsite typically. Um, another thing I do, and I've done it at this site, and again, I'll put a picture and if I have any video, I will. It was when my son was younger. Over in this area over here, we had, I had a pack and play out. And so I put a pack and play there, put toys in it, and oh, and a tip for the pack and play as well as the stroller is I bring up just cheap twin size sheets. Um, for the pack and play, I would use a fitted sheet just because it helps it to kind of stay over the pack and play better. Um, and I would cover it when it's not in use and that way debris and things aren't falling into it but it gives you another place to put your child if they do well in a pack and play, playing with toys independently. And we do have a sheet up there on the bear box. We just park our stroller there next to it when we're not using it, cover it with the um, 
the sheet so again it's helping keep it a little bit cleaner free of debris so baby's not putting a bunch of little pine needles and things in her mouth that she finds in the seat um, it also is kind of our way to camouflage it a little bit so that it's not so obvious we have a stroller just sitting out here when we're not on the campsite I hope you can hear me above her um, with the pack and play though I didn't bring it for her I didn't think she would handle it well I debated it for a little while our oldest we brought up like an octagonal gate thingy because a cousin of ours who had kids before us brought up something like that with like a tarp or something that went in the bottom so they're not on the dirt and it allowed the allowed their kids to play there with toys and stuff my oldest daughter never played well independently on her own so it was just a waste of space unless there was an adult in the gated area with her she didn't do well with it um and so that was a waste and so you just kind of have to know your kids you need to know your kids and what if you think that they will actually you know play well independently in a gated situation like that or a pack and play otherwise it's not really worth it bringing it up um so my son was really really good with it um and my third daughter was as well but my first two were not so it would have been it was a waste to bring anything like that up for them because if they're just gonna sit there crying the whole time it's not really worth it but that is another option of another place to put them if you don't want them crawling in the dirt on the ground you know putting things in their mouths and things like that which we're not too keen on so we've never really done that and um, that's worked out well but she's really into being held specifically by me so I didn't think she'd do what the pack and play possibly next year when she's 18 months old she'll she might do okay with it then and that just gives us a safe place to put her while I'm cooking or or something like that we just need her to be contained and able to do things on her own if possible so that is my next little tip as far as where you can put them um, while you're on the campsite uh, when we get back from our adventuring today, or it possibly will be tomorrow, I'll talk, I'll take you inside the tent, show you how we do our sleeping arrangements, um, how I just kind of set all of that stuff up. And then if there's anything else that I find that I can think of that would be useful for you to know on how to make camping work with a young baby. Before I forget, my biggest tip is if you have family or friends you can go camping with, and if they are also are not strapped down with a young baby, go camping with them because then you have hopefully an extra set of hands that can just help out when you really need, you know, someone just to hold them while you're just trying to get things done, um, making lunches, making food, uh, helping your other kids with something, walking the baby around in the stroller to help them put them down for a nap, something like that. Um, I haven't mentioned in this video I did in my one I just did before this um, that my parents are up here this year with us and they are cooking dinners for us every single night so that has been a huge help because nighttime is hard with a baby at least with my babies so having them take care of the food and then my girls are helping them with the cleanup and everything as they're old enough to do that and my son is too um, but it helps a ton if you can get any help like that so if you're able to I highly recommend it um, that's that would be my biggest tip to really just help things run a little smoother um, you don't need it we've done it without but it does make things a lot easier if you can get that extra bit of adult help around or teenage help even with through like older cousins you know or or something like that so I didn't want to forget to tell you about that so like I said we're gonna be leaving now it'll just be a second for you but um, I will take you inside the tent show you how we do sleeping arrangements what I do to try to keep baby warm at night and things like that so I'll be back in a little bit for you and tell you all about that all right it is the next day we had a good time on our hike and everything yesterday we went and played in Kings Canyon in the river um, down there and that was a lot of fun for the kids anyhow um, as you can see we're inside the tent now so I wanted to go over what I do for our baby as far as sleeping arrangements how I dress her or you know when we had our son um, just to keep them warm at night and again 
this is what works for us. It might not be what works for you, but I'll also tell you kind of what I do when they're in the, you know, one to two year old range as well in case that's where you're at. Um, but it could also work for you for a baby as well. So I'm going to flip the camera around and show you the setup I have. Um, and then also like changing diapers and things like that. So hopefully this will give you some tips or some something to spark you know how you think you might be able to handle it but actually before I do that I thought yesterday on the hike um, one other thing that I didn't talk about um, was a baby carrier that is a life saver saver as well um, while camping especially if you're comfortable wearing them on your back um, that helps a lot I don't tend to carry babies on my back until about four months old three to four months old I think probably four months um, that's when I kind of start carrying them on my back so especially if you're comfortable with it and I know some people would say no to this but um, while you're cooking um, but I, that's how I do it at home sometimes too so that helps a lot um, and just you know keeping them near you helps keep them warm and uh, that's how I wore her yesterday on our hike the whole time and she took a nap the whole time so that is a huge life saver as well um, we use an ergo uh, carrier and I they may have different models now I mean our first ones we got when we had our second baby so she's almost nine so we've had it for a while um, so I use an ergo when they're a baby and then when they're getting too big for that we switch to a Tula toddler carrier and love that one as well. Both of those are absolutely our favorite carriers. When my third daughter was a baby up here about two weeks old, um, I did not use the ergo. I actually used a baby hawk carrier. Um, it's similar to an ergo. It's a lot um, thinner material and I chose that because with the ergo I would have needed to use the ergo um, infant insert and I just felt like that was going to be way too hot for her and myself um, if she needed to be in that you know carrying her around in that so I went with the baby hawk one that I bought it specifically for being up here camping with her um, because it was thinner material it gave enough you know a good amount of support for her head still and I was able to use that carrier all around and I really enjoyed that one and then I started using that one for pretty much all my infants after that um, because I just never really took to the infant insert in the ergo so I waited on starting to use the ergo until um, like I said they're three or four months old um, so I, that was a good one for us to have um, we've also used a Moby wrap but again that's kind of cumbersome wrapping it all around you the ends would undoubtedly drag in the dirt and it can be kind of warm the baby hawk one does tie but it's very simple ties so it was easy to get on and off um the ones that go around your shoulders and back and everything are a little on the long side so they could drag but like i said the other benefits of it were totally worth it so i wanted to make sure i talked about baby wearing baby carriers also as a great option for you know toting your baby around all over the place all right, so we are about a week into our stay here. So the tent inside here is pretty much a mess. Uh, it's not too horrible, but there are seven of us in here. And if you're curious as to how I do all of this, my video on how I set up the inside of our tent, which I'll link above and below, tells you about how I do things, why I do things, and all of that good stuff. So if you're interested more in how I set this up, what these things are, um, you could go check out that video. I don't remember if I talk about it or not. I'm going to close the tent here because bugs are getting in. Um, this is an air mattress for my husband and myself. It is a king size, but it is two um, twin size beds that are zipped together. Um, if I can find it on Amazon, I will put it in my Amazon store and it'll be under my camping section of the store. So you guys can check that out. Um, don't worry my husband is out there with her so this is our bed our three oldest girls are here so we have a ten and a half year old almost nine year old and a just turned seven year old and this we've had it this way for a long time and then my son is on a little cot over here before he moved to this cot he was in a pack and play that was here and then over here is our like all of our 
suitcases, our toiletry bag, dirty clothes, and then we have a little toilet set up here as well. So this is just a brief overview. This bag right here contains all diapers and changing supplies for my baby. So that just stays there at the foot of the bed. And it's a pretty easy walk in for myself um, from the front of the tent here. And I just wear these little booties right there. Those little booties, I got them at Costco. Um, I wear those all around the campsite. It helps keep my feet clean, cleaner than wearing sandals, which is what I'm used to wearing all the time. And they're super easy to just pop off there, walk in here if I need to, and then lean down. And this is my changing area for my baby. So I just have a waterproof mat here. This is one that I would use on my changing table at home. So I have that set up there. These are her pajamas. <laughs> um, and then some wipes. Again, the diaper bag is right there to be able to grab things out of easily. And I keep a couple of toys in here to entertain her with, whether it's when she wakes up early in the morning and I'm not quite ready to get up and get out of bed or to distract her while she's getting changed. Um, and then I do have these purple packing cubes are hers. So again, easy to get to. I try to keep everything within arm's reach um, to be able to change her. Um, so that's that's that setup. Then as far as sleeping goes for the baby, we co-sleep with all of our babies um, until about a year old. So she's just sleeping in between my husband and myself. And how I have this set up, I'll show you. And we don't use sleeping bags. We actually bring up bedding for us. It's just what we prefer. It makes it a lot nicer and more comfortable. Before I get down there and show you, um, we do keep a blanket underneath our air mattress that just helps air cold air from seeping up from the ground up into the air in here which make does make it cold i have a mattress pad on and this is my first year to actually do this but i think it's really helping i put a blanket on top of the air mattress and underneath the mattress pad just for a little extra insulation and warmth and then the fitted sheet here so that's for my husband and myself to stay extra warm but also for the baby all right so for her in addition to that i have Okay, here we go. It's all getting kind of crinkled there. All right, so I have another kind of flannel type blanket here, a waterproof mat in case she had overflowed her diaper or something. It won't, um, you know, get into our bedding because there's not really a way to wash it while we're up here. And then I have another, this is a thinner sheet type um, blanket. And then another waterproof type mat here because this is where her bottom typically will sit. So I'm just trying to be extra careful with all of that. And then this is a thin fleece type blanket here. So I have that for her and it's all, this is on top of a sleeping pad. Um, I will link this below if I can find it on Amazon. I did buy this through Walmart. So if I can't find it on Amazon, I will link this below um, just to the Walmart link. And this is what we've used for all of our kids to sleep on. It's what they sleep on at home as we close sleep. So these, this is adjustable so you can put it, you know, so their body fits in here and they won't tip over or anything. Their head goes up here. So like I said, I have this blanket on it. And then I always put a, this is a cloth diaper, but that's what I use for all of our burp cloths. Um, it's just my preference. And that way, this is something that's easy to change out if it gets spit up on it or anything like that. I can change that out really quickly. I left this here to remind me to talk about little hats too. So this is where she sleeps. Although the last couple of nights, she has just been sleeping in my arms because for whatever reason, she just gets really fussy when I put her back down here to sleep for the night after nursing and she ends up just sleeping in my arms for most of the night so this is where she should be sleeping it just doesn't always end up that way and I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to talk about with this as far as keeping the baby warm um I do use footed fleece pajamas, zip up pajamas. If it was extra cold, how I try to make sure my babies stay warm for the night is, I will put on a 
non-fleece footed pajamas, so just the linen ones. I'll put that on in the size that they are currently wearing. Then I will have a size up from what they're currently wearing in the fleece footed pajamas. So for my daughter who fits into six month size clothes right now, she would be wearing a six month size linen footed pajamas. Then I would put on a nine month size fleece footed pajamas. And the reason is because it will fit easier onto her um, to have the next size up of the fleece one. Otherwise it's a really tight squeeze and it can, I think it can be uncomfortable for them. So I do have a size up. So I come prepared with the right size of this one in case this is all I'm putting her in. Um, but I do have one that's a size up just in case I needed that if I was going to do the linen and the fleece but it, it's been fairly warm in like the 50s at night so it hasn't been bad plus on top of that I do swaddle until about a year old so um this uh, it's called a Houdini swaddle blanket at the time there weren't that very many of them like this so I know there's more that are this zip up type and it's really um you know tight makes it more feel like it's either a houdini swaddle or a, a wombie i can't or that might be the brand i can't remember but i'll definitely have this linked in my amazon store and i absolutely swear by these i love them my kids who have been swaddled in these sleep have slept the best overall uh, and so i really really like these so this is another layer of warmth and then like I said, we have a sheet, a blanket, and a comforter. So this is also going on my babies. Plus sleeping in between my husband and myself. That's another layer of warmth, you know, body heat sharing here. So she's been fine as far as warmth goes, except for her head. Now, I have tried in the past to have them wear a little cap at night. But inevitably, they always come off my kids' heads. So either just from them moving their heads around on here it just comes off so I can I've never been able to keep a little hat on their head um but maybe you'll have better luck than I do but that would be a great option as well because her ears and her head can feel a little chilled in the middle of the night while the rest of her is fine um but I just I haven't been able to keep a hat on so unfortunately now when about four years ago we went camping in Yellowstone and that is the coldest I have ever felt in my life at night while camping like it was bone chillingly cold so stinking cold and my son who was not yet one year old so he I had the linen um sleeper the fleece sleeper I tried with the hat, he was sleeping in bed with us, all of that, and it was still really cold. So for him, I would either, especially if I did the linen sleeper plus the larger fleece sleeper, I would put socks on over his linen sleeper on his feet and they would be fine to go have the larger fleece sleeper go over his feet with the socks on. With just the right size on the fleece sleeper, I put the socks over the fleece sleeper, if that makes sense. So I don't try to squeeze my baby's foot in there with socks on when it's the correct size sleeper that they're in. I put it um, over it and that helps really well. For their little hands, if they get cold and this would work, you know, if they aren't being swaddled especially because at least her hands are covered in the swaddle. So I'm not concerned about that right now. But I use another pair of socks and I put them on first before I put their hands through the holes here just so that, you know, it's kind of going over the socks makes it harder for them to wiggle them off and that helps keep their hands um, warm. I've never had good luck with those little baby mittens so I've always just used a second pair of socks. Uh, let's see and that if I'm remembering correctly helped him a lot but I think he also ended up sleeping in my arms a lot during that trip to Yellowstone which honestly I did not mind because like I said it was so incredibly cold I wanted his body heat as well we were sharing body heat just to keep both of us warm so that is kind of the setup on how we sleep and then how I try to keep them warm at night now if you do not co-sleep with your kids and we do this after our kids are about a year old um, we would set up a pack and play like I said over here and put them in that um, to keep them warm then if they're not going to be near you with the body heat and you know and they're not in a swaddle necessarily they're you know outgrown all of that stuff then I would use a fleece sleep sack that 
typically has the arms free. I think some of them do have arms attached. So it's like putting them in a sleeper with their arms going through, but then it's a sack on the bottom. If I'm remembering correctly, it's been a while since I've used one. Um, so I would double up on pajamas if I needed to, if it was that cold at night, um, the socks on the feet, possibly even the hands, or if they're old enough to actually wear little mittens, I would put those on, the beanie if they'll keep it on, and then a sleep sack. I will also put a blanket on the ground underneath the pack, pack and play to help, um, you know, lessen how much air is seeping, cold air is coming up through the ground, through the tent. Just put a blanket down underneath the sleeping, the pack and play. I think I believe I even put a blanket underneath the pad of the pack and play as well as on top and then the fitted pack and play, um, the squishier, uh, like the quilted, um, kind of like a mattress pad or a fitted sheet. It's the quilted ones. I would use that. Um, cause uh, you know, they're not at that age. They don't necessarily keep a blanket on them. So the sleep socks really, really help with that. If, we weren't using the pack and play and if we weren't co-sleeping the next thing i would do would be create a little bed next to my bed um, and have them on the ground there again i would use a ton of blankets probably uh, just to help with that cold air coming up through the ground to help them but i just kind of set up a little cushioned bed next to my bed so if it was a baby that i was not co-sleeping with and they weren't ready for the pack and play or i just wanted them closer to me that's what i would do is just kind of make a little bed on in the spot right next to my bed um it you know it also helps you just with being able to check on them easier in the middle of the night instead of having to get up and look you know if you needed to peek over the pack and play side um, you can hear their noises throughout the night and all that good stuff so those would be my other options if we didn't co-sleep with them at you know up until a year and next summer she will most likely be in a pack and play in here so I already explained all that so I'm gonna interject right here uh, because things have changed a little bit since the two years ago that I originally filmed that footage. Um, still use a pack and play in the tent for my young kids, uh, well, my babies slash toddlers. My daughter, two and a half, we have her in one this time. Works out great. She does really, really well sleeping them in them. She knows that it's time to go to bed when she's in one so that she's kind of trained herself in a way <laughs> to know that. So that's very helpful. Um, but I... I do stand by, you know, putting um, blankets on the ground, creating like a padding. Uh, if, if she was going to sleep right next to me, I think next year though, she's going to move up into the little cot that we have that my son, you saw he was sleeping on. He'll pro She'll probably move into that and just be right next to me on that. But I wanted to show you something that I discovered within the last two years that I didn't have at the time that I think is awesome and I use it not just for camping I use it anytime we use the pack and play and I just never knew these existed before so I wanted to share it with you and all it is is this mat that fits this cushiony mat that fits inside your pack and play so you have the regular bottom down there and I still put the quilted um, sheet on it just again for more um, insulation uh, and cleanliness and then this I got on Amazon of course it has a firm side you can see that for eh, zero to nine months old and then this is your soft side for nine months and older and it folds up I mean it's not the super most compact thing it folds up well enough because um, it's three times this thickness when you fold it up and then you can see where the creases are there and it comes with its own case um, the outside comes completely off and it's three separate foam pieces that then get zippered in so it's washable and this thing I think is amazing I wish I had this for my kids um, my other kids when they were younger and needed more cushion as because as the babies get older they really do need a little more a little more cushion in my in my opinion to be able to sleep in a pack and play because it's just so hard on the bottom um so this thing has been awesome and if I w didn't have the cot here that my son is still sleeping on although he's a little big for it now uh and that that is just I don't think I showed it to you it's I'm pretty sure I just got this like at Walmart it's just this cot 
it folds up fairly compact and it comes with this little like a fitted sheet cover so it can also get washed um so he's on that but he is a little long for it so he's going to need the sleep pad um he probably should have had that this year but i didn't realize we didn't have a fourth one for him when we went pack, you know when we packed and everything this year so i'll get one for next year anyhow if i didn't have that cot that she could sleep on next year I would probably just take this mat with us and put it next to my bed here on the ground and she would sleep on that because I think she'd be a little big for the pack and play. Um, she probably would also hang off the mat because uh, she, as it is her head is all the way up there and then her feet are touching the bottom here. So that would be my other option. And I just wanted to share that with you. So this is our setup this year. It's a little different than what I was describing because we actually have a second tent right there with my three oldest girls in it now. So we have our king size bed and then pack and play here, cot there, and then all of our luggage and everything over here. I also have a bin of toys down here for my daughter to play with in the pack and play. And this morning uh, she was up before the rest of us. And so I just took that whole bin and threw it in there with her and she was able to entertain herself so well. So just a small bin of toys, books, whatever it is they like can be really helpful as well. As far as feedings go in the middle of the night, I realized as I was thinking through this video what I wanted to share with you that I have never had to deal with a non-nursing baby. I've never had to deal with bottles in the middle of the night for with a baby that's camping. So um, for me, it's I've been very fortunate that I've been able to nurse all of my kids and that makes it really easy because again, co-sleeping, we just kind of nurse throughout the night as, as my baby needs it and then put them back down. If you are dealing with bottles and formula, um, I don't even know how you would do camping with pumped milk. If anyone has experience with that, that would be awesome if you could leave any tips, advice, information of that sort down below in the comments and with even just formula feeding, bottle feeding um, while camping. I'm sure people would really appreciate that if you have any experience with that, because I don't. So um, I don't even know the first thing to tell you other than I would assume you would just have bottles with your water in them ready to go somewhere in your tent with, you know, those canisters or those little Tupperwares that you can put pre-measured amounts of uh, formula in just so that it's ready to go. Just like if you were going out for an outing, you know, going and doing errands or something, what you would have prepped and ready to go of a bottle of formula, I would assume you would just do something similar to that in your tent for when you needed it in the middle of the night. But again, if anyone has tips, tricks, advice, anything like that on bottle feeding a baby in the middle of the night while camping like this, please put that down in the comments below and help everyone else out with that information. It is getting later now, so it's a little darker. Hopefully you can see me, but um, as you can see, baby is taking a nap on my back. So like I said, baby carrier, lifesaver. Um, she, st she stayed on my back since we got back from the lake. I was able to hang up all our stuff on our clothesline over here, get everything starting to get dry. Um, I ate dinner with her on my back and we're still moving around doing things. Um, so the last thing I think that I wanted to talk about was as far as camping with the baby. And if I think of anything else, <laughs> I will insert it after I get home. I'll make a note of it and put it in here if I can think of any other tips, but I kind of need to close out the video. because, And I don't remember a thing about what I was actually going to share with you when I got cut off in the middle of that clip. Um, I wish I could remember. I looked back to see if maybe I had written a note or something to myself about what this last thing was that I wanted to share with you. And I couldn't find anything other than to keep things simple when you're camping as much as possible. And I'm a little confused why I even have that note because I don't necessarily keep things simple other than just trying to keep things um, like the least amount of work as possible for me while we're up here, but that means that there's more work getting us ready to get up here. So I don't know that you'd consider that being, you know, keeping things simple. There's a car going by on the road up here, or a big truck. Um, so that was the only note I could find uh, about what I possibly wanted to share with you but I can't remember exactly what it was. I do want to say though, if you are trying camping 
with a baby or a young child, it's going to be hard. <laughs> it won't be easy. Um, it's a trip, not a vacation. I'll tell you that for sure. There are definitely times when you have a baby that it's easier than others. Uh, when we had my third daughter up here as like a two and a half week old, fairly easy time because she just slept so much of it and she could get strapped to me or someone and or put even put in a stroller like cocooned in a, a stroller and she just slept so much that that was actually a really easy time to be camping because she didn't require much other than sleep and nursing so that um that time was easy um up until basically my kids start to get mobile they're fairly easy while camping once they start like rolling crawling around and especially new walkers it's very challenging especially if they are one to put things in their mouth so you're constantly checking and seeing what they're finding on the ground and putting them putting in their mouths um that that is hard um and then once they get past that stage like right now with my daughter being two and a half years old it's a lot easier than even just a year ago uh she does obviously still need supervision. It's very helpful that I have older kids around that want to take her on adventures and go do things with her and show her different things. So that's very helpful. Also, it takes some of the burden off of myself and my husband. Um, and she isn't so adventurous that she's wandering off far into the woods or anything like that. Um, but obviously you still need to be cautious about things, especially if you have a campfire going. Um, so it's, we're definitely getting into the more easier stages of having young children around again. Uh, so that has been a good positive change. But I just wanted to, to say it does get better as your kids get older. My older kids now, my oldest is 12 and a half. Um, it, so many things are just so much easier than they ever used to be. So I just wanted to encourage you that if you try camping with young children and it doesn't go so great and it seems like a lot of work, it's not just you, it is a lot of work, <laughs> but it does get better. So I just didn't want you to get feel so discouraged by the amount of work that it takes to have a young child up with you. And maybe if you do shorter trips than what we do, it wouldn't be such a big deal. Um, so just know that things get easier. Your kids become more independent. They can be more helpful with cleaning up and taking care of your own things, putting what items on the clothesline to dry, you know, so many things that they can just handle on their own um, that they couldn't when they were younger. So it does get better. I'd have to say that um, so far this year has been one of the better years. And we're only a couple days into our trip this year, but it's definitely one of the better trips we've had up here because the kids are just so much more independent and helpful um, than in years past. So it does get better. If it's something that you really want to do with your family, then don't get so discouraged by the hardness that comes with the little young kids and try it again. Maybe wait a few years or just keep pushing through it and, and see how it gets better year after year for you. Well, I think that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I hope that the tips were helpful. I hope it helps encourage you and not discourage you. That's never my intention. Um, but to just try to give you whatever help I can um, to make this run a little bit smoother for you, if at all possible. Uh, if you have any tips, like I said, I do not have any experience with um, non-nursing babies so if you have any tips related to that please leave those down in the comments below it's very helpful to hear from others and their own experiences and um, I've gotten some great tips from you guys on past videos on things that you guys do and um, I just love hearing from you in general so thank you for watching and I will see you in another video bye